the true cost of COVID for society was when the Fed started buying corporate bonds and all kinds of bonds, junk bonds, and really started bailing out the economy. This is a much further step than what Ben Bernanke and his people did when they decided to bail out the mortgage market in 2008. Rob McCauley is a former Fed official, a historian, professor, um, lots of accolades here. He wrote a paper or a book, I'm not quite sure. He was on Macro Musings and he discussed this incident or this dynamic. And I want to use this opportunity here to talk about this because at Orange Capital Partners, we're uh, you know, clearly aware of the problem of monetary policy, financial economics uh, in all kinds of ways. Uh, one way is the neglect of the high national debt, and the other is the massive influence of the Federal Reserve on the economy, which is uh, creating inflation, which is making lives difficult for a lot of people, if not everybody, but most importantly, which is, uh, you know, in the end, fundamentally going to hinder progress and put this idea of liberal markets uh, in jeopardy. This is not in wrong podcast. It's September 19, 2023. This is Krim Delco. Since the last update, we're down about 6%. The market is down 1.5%. For the year, we're up 126.2%. The market's up 15%. We're outperforming by 111.2%. The market's still open today, so the numbers could change. Um, so let's talk about this uh, particular episode of Macro Musings. Uh, shout out to Macro Musings. It's a uh, uh, it's a it's one of those podcasts that you have to I would say grow into, uh, but it very it's very useful. It gives you a sense for what people in Washington are thinking, what people in the Fed are thinking. Uh, you know, it, it's not it's not pretty. I can tell you that uh, because it it really supports the thesis that we have here at Orange Capital Partners. That a lot of people have. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I do sound like a libertarian parrot here when I talk about, um, you know, we are, uh, the Fed is turning into a, uh, let's say, a, a central planning agency. Uh, the Fed is um, allowing lots of junk to survive, which is, which is really the problem, if you think about it, because... What you need in a functioning economy that is based on some sort of free markets, right? Uh, you need people to fail. You need mistakes to be eradicated from the marketplace. And that's what COVID did. What COVID did is it entered a new phase of Federal Reserve intervention that was based on, um, that was based on we're just going to bail out people. We're just going to have people um, get, you know, get their money no matter what. And what that did to, what that did to the economy is, first and foremost, it created massive amounts of inflation. Uh, you know, let's say we have discussions all the time here, just anecdotally, why are prices so high in New York? What's going on with New York? Well. If you channel trillions of dollars of bailout money through the money center banks in New York, a lot of things will fall off there and, and just create massive inflation. So this is one thing. But this is uh, not meant to be, uh, uh, th th this is meant to, let's focus on, on really the important points here. This is a very big subject, so we can g get to it very quickly. What, we're, what we want to discuss here is fundamentally three things. Okay, we have number one, we have a crisis, in this case, the COVID crisis, which opens up the gates of the Fed to support the bond market in unprecedented ways, which number two, creates enormous amounts of moral hazard, uh, creates a corollary effects such as, for example, bond ETFs becoming a vehicle for anybody once you're in there to almost be triple A rated, no matter what you're actually rated, because the Fed's going to bail out anyway. So there's this, uh, you know, undoing of the rating uh, business, which is another problem. Like basically, if you if you if you bail out triple A and then double A and then triple B and then you go down to junk, what you're really saying is the central banks is taking over everything, and that that in itself is a massive problem 
for the bond markets, for pricing, pricing of risk. And this is the number three, which is really the pricing of risk is being undone by the Fed. And that, 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 that I just want to focus on these three points. Okay, there's a lot of other stuff. We have national debt, we have inflation, we have, uh, but I just want to focus on these. So we have a crisis which triggers the Federal Reserve to start bailing out um, indiscriminately, and that distorts the price of risk. And that is, um, if you want to kill a free market economy, this is how you kill it. You kill the price of risk because that way you take away um, things like performance, um, you know, accountability, uh, fear of failure. Uh, you take away all kinds of mechanisms which are paramount in a free function liberal economy. You, you can't have a, a, a financial market where there's no price of risk. So I think that will be uh, the, the main point that I want to discuss here. Uh, you know, price of risk is important because entrepreneurs need to get a signal from the financial market that they are being tolerated, that their projects are being acknowledged. And if that's not existent, then we, we're going to get all kinds of nonsense. And if the Federal Reserve, on the one hand, raises interest rates, to kill demand and subdue inflation, which they did post COVID, but on the other hand, supports all this junk. We really have a very, very tricky situation here also for the Federal Reserve, which is again, another discussion point that uh, maybe I can tangentially uh, discuss here. But again, if you don't have a price of risk, then you don't have a functioning economy. You know, I mean, Lenin said, if you want to kill capitalism, kill money. A more, a, a, a more sophisticated version of this statement would be, if you want to kill capitalism, then kill the pricing mechanism in the financial markets. If money markets don't work, and with money markets, I mean generally, all the, whenever entrepreneurs go to the market to raise money, and there's no price of that, no real risk associated to that, well, then we fall into crony capitalism. And that explains why we have so many projects being funded that make no sense, even here in Silicon Valley. You know, I, I keep, you know, uh, bantering about, uh, you know, Uber or Instacart or, uh, you know, all these kinds of companies that, that shouldn't even exist, based, you know, just based on pure economics. But they do exist because there is this almost implicit bailout of the backers, and then you can do these, you know, maybe you can call the moonshot where you can say, well, look, it makes no sense as a business here, but somehow the technology or somehow something might, might work out in the future. But that's not, that's government capitalism. That's what you have in Korea or even in China or Japan. Let's just throw shit at the wall. Something will happen. That's not how the U.S. capitalist system has become the most powerful system in the world. And we're, 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 we're slipping into that system. Maybe we're already in there. COVID was the, I would say, a big step towards that. 2008 was the first step. Bernanke de committed the original sin. Now, according to Macaulay, there was an incident in the 1970s where the Federal Reserve bailed out some, um, some sort of, um, I think it was a railway or something like that. So there were precedents where the American Federal Reserve Bank system bailed out economy, uh, econo economic agents, right? Uh, they somehow helped the banks to, to finance, to roll over debt that was basically going bankrupt. So there was some sort of precedent. Bernanke opened the gates with his QE stuff, and that was already really bad. COVID was really, I would say, you know, economic historians might go back and say this was the nail in the coffin of, of the whole neoliberal model of the 20th century, right? Some people might cheer about that. Fine, go cheer, but give me an alternative. That's the, that's the, that's the problem. I, I don't have a problem with this system being replaced because this system ain't working. We have 33 trillion in debt. We have a completely dysfunctional Congress, which is supposed to allocate money to the economy 
We have people in the Fed openly. This is one corollary, actually. Here is my biggest concern. If we could put a stop, so, sorry, I'm jumping, but if we could put a stop on this today, I think it's still fine. We have such a strong economy, the four pillars of growth, uh, electrification of the economy, AI, space, you know, SpaceX, etc. And then, of course, energy. We have, you know, massive investments in what we call renewable energies. But we have this opportunity to use AI to make better materials, to make better technologies for energy harvesting. This could be either solar or things like fusion. So we are at, on the brink of really massive productivity gains. That. But what we've opened up is a Pandora's box here where the Federal Reserve now thinks that maybe they should be buying ETFs of companies that supposedly are saving the planet or even worse, have some sort of racial inclusion in, in, the, in their you know, corporate agenda or whatever that is. So you see, well, I mean, this, this is but this is what people are talking about now. So we use the Federal Reserve to do policy. It's a backdoor um, you know, intrusion into liberty, into freedom, and it's, it's central planning at an at, at, at even worse level than, than what the communists had. At least the communists, I think, believe that all they should do is plan production and make sure people have enough food and, and, and tanks to fight and all that stuff. Here, we're, we're much more subtle. We're saying, no, we're going we're gonna to also try to do social policy and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And, and of course, I, I, I don't think you need to be an economist or anything to understand how dangerous that is. To, to, to the economy, because, because where, where is this going to lead, right? It's going to lead to the famous Robespierre uh, situation, where in the end we're going to behead ourselves, uh, because we have no accountability, we have no, um, we, we, we have no mechanism to measure um, what's right, what's wrong, none of that stuff. So, so then chaos ensues. So we can't have this happen. Look, I don't have a a, a good solution for how to stop it, unfortunately. I mean, uh, my solution, which is, uh, which is for a whole other podcast, would be to, um, to, to separate, to, to, to uh, have a you know, segregation of the United States, separation, whatever the word is. So we have you know, California, Massachusetts, Florida, Texas, they all become their own entities, and then let them compete. Let's have uh, you know, the Northeastern United States turning into some sort of social capitalist, woke, uh, whatever economy, maybe California, you know, Southern California, or something like that. Silicon Valley turning into a Switzerland-style libertarian economy. Texas do whatever Texas does. And then let, let them compete. Let, let's open up the, the borders. Let people vote with their feet. Let, be money, let money be free and, uh, you know, adopt Bitcoin or something along those lines. And then let's, let's go and see who wins uh, uh, you know we, we can do this experiment like like germany was imposed to with with after world war ii and see east and west germany i always joked uh, if we had a, a sort of a, a east uh, united states uh, using the analogy where, where we have this federal reserve congress washington dc wall street money center banks and we have a west united states which is basically run by bitcoin i guarantee you in 50 years we would have a, a much higher disparity of wealth and productivity between East and West than we even had in Germany because, because the system that we have is incredibly flawed. So to summarize, uh, you know, Rob McCarley in his, I think it's a paper and a book, whatever it is, doesn't matter. He, he wrote about the bond market interventions of the Fed, which in my opinion are not just an original sin, but really the nail in the coffin of um, of what we call liberal market, li liberal market democracies. And it's important to put both. It's the market, so the, the actual economy where entrepreneurs uh, you know, solve problems, solve products and services, and also democracies because it's a backdoor central planning system that also circumvents um, whatever we consider democracy in terms of people voting or people expressing their opinion, it's a backdoor um, uh, way to, to, to give power to people that don't have that power. If the Federal Reserve has the power to buy ETFs that have a certain agenda supposedly attached to them, well, then that is policy. That, is not, that has nothing to do anymore with monetary 
you know, rescuing monetary policy or any of that stuff, which in itself is questionable. This is just policy, period. Unelected officials, um, unelected, unvoted, unaccounted uh, decision making. This has nothing to do with democracy anymore. So this is the problem. Um, in this episode, I'm just stating the problem. I have ideas of how to solve it. But I think first we need to state the problem. We need to understand what's at stake before we can talk about solutions. So what's at stake is that the Federal Reserve of the United States is intervening in bond markets and therefore creating a centrally planned bailout system, which is the same as a centrally planned favoritism for whatever agenda is on the table. And just to uh, throw that in as a tangent for all the, you know, whatever it is, the, the, the sort of left-leaning cheerers now that think this is a good thing, just think about what's going to happen when the tides of politics change and when the other side takes over the same system and then they start buying, you know, bonds of companies that have weapon systems or bonds of companies that, um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, do things, uh, you know, build walls uh, to, to prevent migration from the South. Whatever it may be, you know, it's it, it you know once you're in that Pandora's box of unchecked power, um, it it can go against you very quickly. So so you know again, Robespierre had to feel that on his own neck just to to leave it there. This is a very complex uh, thematic. I, I can't. I, it's not even you know advisable to do all of this in one episode. This has to be also written down in essay form, maybe even in journal form. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just wanted to bring this out and, and start the conversation so we can also uh, hopefully, you know, the end goal here is to offer solutions and then go and talk to people who, who, who can make a change here or at least bring it out there. So again, the Federal Reserve intervening in the bond markets in 2008 and then in COVID is a very, very bad thing. It's creating massive, massive amounts of distortions in the price of risk in financial markets, which is undermining the functioning of the economy and creating inflation. And it's creating lots of complete misuse of resources. And that in itself is a problem. And that's jeopardizing the situation of uh, what we call liberal democracies. Thank you.